In a way, rare disease is a misnomer. It's a lot of people. My name's Rich Horgan, and I'm the founder of Cure Rare Disease, a nonprofit that's developing customized therapeutics for rare disease, and our first target's Duchenne muscular dystrophy. I have a brother with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. I'm Terry Horgan, 23. Terry was diagnosed with DMD when he was three. Duchenne's a rare disease, a disease that saps one's muscle over time. My mom's three brothers had it and all passed away from it. It's 100% fatal. My uncle Bobby had the same disease. And when my grandmother found out, she got on a train, went to Boston with Bobby all by herself, and the doctor at the time said, go home and love your son. That's all, that was it. We didn't want to just take Terry home and love him, we wanted him to have a life watching your brother not being able to do the things that other kids are doing, not being able to play ball or go to prom, strikes home. There's not a lot out there for Duchenne. We're not even on a clinical trial because they're all numb. The trials are geared for younger children. They take all the information from the older boys over the years. And then they're kind of like pushed aside. It's easier to get results from, you know, younger kids that are still walking. Not a lot of for non-ambulatory, so we're kind of left out. Forget about us type thing, we're still here. The pharmaceutical companies need to make money, and how can they make money from an N equals one case, from a rare disease patient? We need to change the paradigm. Every individual with Duchenne muscular dystrophy is slightly different from the other one, which complicates to say, okay, how do we get a molecule that fits all these different sort of permutations and combinations that is Duchenne, and more broadly, other diseases. Angela and I looked at it and we strategized going, what approaches could we take to actually help Terry instead of what approaches exist? What's unique about this particular moment is that those tools are getting to the point where we can actually use them, not just for making drugs to treat tens of thousands of people, but we can actually use them to set up home workshops, build solutions for diseases that don't have, say, the financial backing of a huge industry. What we chose to do from early on was to house this in a not-for-profit, because the idea is that we can move more nimbly because we're funding a group of collaborators. This allows us to move with a clarity and a speed that traditional industry may not be able to do. Working with patients who are very sick, there's a real incentive to move fast, to actually say, I've got something that could potentially help you, not in 10 or 15 years, but next year. Give them a little bit more incentive to, you know, put in the extra hours. More so than ever, that kind of investment is beginning to pay off. Tim, over the course of 10 months, developed a customized therapeutic for a little girl a year and change later, she's still with us. This isn't fantasy, it's not sci-fi, it's happened. We did this, this has been done. Specifically for Terry, it's starting to pay off now and we're seeing restoration of full length dystrophin. Then we can do this, we can win, we have the plan, we have the team, we're executing. We've made achievements that have never been made before in the field of Duchenne. Treating patients like Terry and translate that to other patients with different ranges of DMD mutations and also different genes, that way we can actually scale. What we learn from every patient doing this customized approach empowers the next one and the next one, and we move quicker. That's the opportunity that exists in the field to exploit, and that's why we're so excited to have his foundation supporting this kind of work. We need every bit of help we can get, and every bit of help matters here. Every, every dollar, every cent, every person who wants to come support, every corporation who wants to partner that's doing something that will make a difference, that will save a lot of lives, now's the time. My brother's 23. Time's not on our side here. And to have his trust and faith that we can do this and shown so in blood and sweat and tears is powerful. We're on the edge of pioneering the development of customized therapeutics and there's hope.